I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. It's not even 9am on a Saturday morning and I have been out and about doing my exercise and I've come home to a problem. And the problem is what's sitting before you. In fact, I've got a bigger problem. I've got many projects on the go and I'm running out of space while I'm waiting for bloody parts. Um, and imagine if I could have up to almost seven projects on the go because I'm doing a daily video, it starts to get a bit hectic. So what's happened here though, is this is the front panel of a dishwasher and alarmingly earlier this week, our Bosch fridge freezer died unceremoniously and that had to be replaced. And now this has started to fail. So they're all about the sort of 10 year mark. So I'm not sure if it's uh, planned obsolescence by Bosch, but uh, it's certainly working out that way. But I'm, I'm determined not to have to go the same route as the fridge and replace it. I'm, I'm gonna get keep this dishwasher on, keep it trucking, keep it chooching. So um, I've got all the parts here. So I've got a, a solution. So you can see it's, it's basically this front fascia panel, which you can buy for 50 bloody quid. And I've seen a whole second hand one of these dishwashers for 15, so I'm not gonna go there. Um, Basically, these fascia panels are held on by these two main parts here. They're the two bits that sort of lock in um, and then support this door handle. And what's really weird is there's a sort of weird child lock system and you can see there's a bit of it here and it's just rubbish. And the whole door, once that fails, there's a lot of strain because when you're pulling the lock, you're not basically activating the unlocking mechanism, you're basically forcing it open. And that puts a lot of strain on these two parts and then these start to fail. So my goal today is to, I say today, I've got like two minutes to do this, is to actually clean this up, right? Get this sort of activated again by uh, gluing these on, sort of these resining these pieces on. And then you can see here, this one though, unfortunately forms part of the kind of pivot mechanism. Focus, there we go. Um, and if I clip that kind of in, uh, I'm thinking that's, I'm trying to work out actually how it goes. Yeah, there you go. It goes in like that, and that must go somehow in here. So I'm going to try to glue all that part in as well. That's going to be a tricky bit. I'll have to probably do it from the front. Um, and then you can see this one's already broken as well, so I'm going to have to try to strengthen that. And then I'm kind of thinking, if I'm going to mix up some uh, small poxy resins to sort of glue this, I might mix up a bigger batch of big boy resin and maybe try to strengthen this, but this probably doesn't need strengthening so much as the mechanism that this relies on needs bloody a damn good kick in. But by the way, getting this all glued up together is going to be a good start. And if I can add any material, filler materials to here to strengthen that, it's going to be good. So I'm going to sort of clean that up and then we'll uh, then we'll just see really if it, how, how good a, a job can be done. Mixing up the goop. So I got my normal two pack Poundland resin. This is the five minute set one. So you don't want to hang around too long, but just get a good old quick mix. So I was looking at the position here. The problem is I can't actually add too much material. So you can't add a bit of you know, cloth or something to strengthen it in an easy way because it'll interfere with the various button mechanisms but what I propose I'll do is add some first let this all set up and then see if there's a place later where I could just add it after I've got the buttons back in so I know what will interfere with them or what won't so I'm just going to put some on this split here and I've, I have cleaned these down gently I'm not going to say I, I did a lot of a massive amount of cleaning I've just basically uh, wiped off the worst of the grease uh, I'm going to apply some more on the actual frame part, just because it's a bit easier. I'm going to I'm going to have to manhandle this or woman handle it. Let's not be uh, sexist. And if you've got glue on both faces that you're woman handling, you're going to fall into the problem of glue everywhere. So that's our part ready to go. Now let's see if I can slip it in and I think it's that way around or that way around, this way around. And actually I can see one more face. I'm going to break my rule. No, actually I'm not. I'm going to put glue in the bit there, which is part of the button pivoting mechanism. So we'll be a bit careful, but I think that's good. Maybe touch just there because that's going to be hard to get out. I'm going to 
I'll just slip that one in. See, don't want to go in. So if I glue on this face, I would be spitting feathers right now. Good, that's kind of good. So it needs some compression on there. I'm gonna find a, a tool, a compression tool. And actually, if you have these, um, you can, they, they do come with these little clampy things, so that could work. Let's try it. Don't normally bother with them, but I can see why. Yeah, that's kind of good, that's good. So while that's clamping off, I'm gonna, while I've clamped off a fat one, I'm going to put this on this end stay stay and let's get this one in yeah so I don't know if you caught my programming stream yesterday but that was a bit of a gamble I uh, I wasn't sure whether or not it would be possible to pick up a new oh no the glue's starting to skew already but I'll be quick uh, pick up a uh, new programming language and try to actually start doing something with it on a stream and have it watchable but I kind of enjoyed that that seemed to work for me I don't know if you caught that or not um, but if you did, yeah, let me know if that's something that could be interesting going forward. So I'm just going to massage some of this resin. This one's got loads of open pores here and there's no mechanism on this side. So I'm definitely going to hit this from the other side when it's all cured up. But while I'm there, just I'm buttering it. Why don't I just butter this front face? Let's get plenty. Oh, broke me stick. Plenty in there where we can. It does show this uh, machine must have a complicated variant which has more buttons on this other side. What what more complexity do you need in a dishwasher? But there, okay, I'm gonna find a clamp for this and we'll come back when these are hardened and uh, take a look, see what we're gonna do on the next stage. I'm getting a little bit bored holding this and I'm gonna go find a clamp, but I just realized I can't let go, so. Hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try a little trick. I've got the uh, soldering iron. Just hit the soldering iron on button. I'm just hoping if I can just... There's bits where you can't see it. I want to see if I can just do a heat weld here. Just like that. I can hear my kids bloody screaming in the other room. Urgh. Bad boys. Bad boys. Bad boys. What you gonna do? Um, I'm going to try one here. Just to just I just want the plastic just to sort of tack into itself. And don't do this with your super expensive soldering iron. Or do. It's not gonna break it. Um the idea being that might just hold it enough so I can go into the other room and get the clamp whilst the resin is hardening and let's see let go yeah that stays good might try that on the other side as well just i know i've clamped it but just to give it that belt and braces dare i dare i do it on an actual face you can see let's see oh almost knackered it a bit on the back Go a little bit on the back and i'm gonna do a little bit here So I'm going to go up and touch all these up with more resin later to sort of replace the plastic that I've I fizzed off. I do apologise, the old camera wasn't even pointing in the right place. What what an amateur. What a total amateur. Mmm, fumey. Don't breathe in those fumes. But yeah, that's that's holding. Good. Now I'm going to go find me clamps. While my resin is curing, I've got a bit of uh, webbing here. I couldn't find um, any fiberglass mat, but I found this bit of webbing. So I'm just using a lighter to sort of sear the frayed edges. And what I'm going to do is just cut this, if I can, it's bloody tough stuff, into small strips. And this is that sort of thick military grade webbing used on all of that, you know, equipment and things. It's really, really sort of tough stuff. Um, but if you actually can impregnate this enough or just glue it into your things, you're, you're basically like making your fiberglass style composite. And that's all it is. When people talk about composites and carbon fiber and blah, 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 that's all they're doing. They're just cutting up stuff like this, different sheets. 
and uh, gluing it with plastics. Um, pretty much like the sort of resin casting you've seen me do and I'm going to be using exactly the same materials. So it's no biggie. Don't believe the hype. You can do it at home. Maybe just not quite on the same scale. If you wanted to do a whole car or something that's going to be trickier but you can do it. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing stopping you. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Now be very careful if you're doing this because of course it's ridiculously hot melted plastic you're playing with here so be very cautious. Probably don't use your fingers and probably don't use a lighter. So I think I've got some nice big pieces here. Probably too big. But all I want to do is strengthen around the handle. While uh, the video camera was off I noticed when I had the resin out the sort of five minute resin that there are a couple of uh, cracks in the actual door handle part around here which I just sort of you know patched up but I kind of want to just get some of this action going on you know like that so it's just got a bit of reinforcement on it so I'm just going to have a sort of inspection of my resin pot where I mix the stuff and that's the second batch there you can see is already starting to go quite hard so the first batch should be cured. I'm just going to take my clamp off gingerly, yeah clamp's pretty good. And this side is pretty good too so they'll cure, I mean don't um, put too much force on these for sort of 24 hours <laughs> and in fact I'm sort of in two minds about whether or not I bother fitting this right away. I probably will and just tell people not to use it, I think they'll be able to manage that. Now I had a look at how the whole door mechanism works and it's absolutely bonkers. I can't see in its design at all how this is supposed to actuate the part on the door when you pull it. It's it's a bit weird. So I'm going to have to investigate that a little bit more. And Maybe there's something I can do to the actual dishwasher itself and <laughs> basically weaken the door mechanism slightly. I don't think the door on it's going to pop open in operation. Not without, you know, I could shove a couple of magnets in if it is an issue. Um, but certainly the amount of strain put on it through its existing design, there's, there's an issue. So it, it's got to be better than that because this will just break again otherwise. So that the button, there we go, they actually, that went in all right. They actually E, F, G, D, C, B. So they actually are, are lettered. Which is weird because from the front they're actually all uh, identical. So that's kind of odd. What's that? Got a bit of bit of resin where it shouldn't be. So if you want to you could get mix up a little bit of white resin, pop that in there and fill those cracks but I don't think I'm going to bother. I think just functional. Functional will suit me. So let's have a go at the reinforcing part. We've got some of those strips again. Now I've got an option. I could use the liquidy resin which is more like the sort of car resin. So you'd mix that in a pot and then you'd dip this in like eggy bread and then sort of stick it in. But let's have a go using just reg regular stuff, regular five minute resin that you'll buy in uh, Poundland. This is the Tommy Walsh DIY time brand. It's weird, these lids just are so tenacious once uh, you use it a couple of times. I don't know if it's air or something. I'm mixing up a goodly amount now this time. Again, make sure you don't cross contaminate those or put the lids on the wrong way around because then you will have definitely a lid problem. I'm going to give it a good mix. And I have to be quite quick here because we want to make sure we get our fiberglass or mat or whatever material you're using in place before the resin becomes unworkable so its pot life is going to be quite short. If it's five minute resin its pot life is probably only about a minute or 30 seconds in reality. So we're ready to go now and uh, I'm just going to butter, butter it. Oh yeah, that's good. You can butter both ends that would be uh, ideal but I think I'm just going to have to leave the very very end of it unbuttered because uh, I get all over my hands. That's going to annoy me. So let's put that over there. So we just want to strengthen it through there. Boosh! Look at that. That's just where it wants to be. Mm -mm -mm. 
That's looking like a mighty fine thing there. This is almost too thick, this stuff though. It's trying to, it's trying to straighten itself out. That's not really a problem. If you've got something lying around, I'm just sort of desperately looking. I should have prepared this like a bit of foam or whatever you might have. Just wedge it in there. Come on, Andrew, find something, find something. Okay, I've got a common thing here, a packet of post-it notes. I think that's gonna do just fine. Scrunch up a post-it note, get it in the hole. Oh no, I can see the, the resin in the pot is starting to uh, harden. Mm, 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 mm. Get that in there. Right, keep buttering it. Hopefully it'll stay. Stay, boy. And let's do the same on another piece. And of course, before you do this, make sure after you've uh, got your buttered up piece of uh, material that it will still fit. There's no uh, obstructions in the actual cabinet that's going to stop this from uh, going where you want. And don't forget, you don't have to butter, if you don't need the whole length, just butter the part you do want to use and uh, cut off the rest. You don't have to cut off the rest now, you can cut off the rest after it's cured, so that's quite nice and easy. Use it like a handle. So there we go, that's the other side there. Just stay down, stay down, stay down, stay down, stay down. So what I'm going to do, get something like some insulating tape, because it's going to be quite easy to remove when you're done. Just going to put it over those two pieces. Oosh. And that's it. You can keep the tape there actually as long as you like. So keep, you can keep the tape on there and then do another layer of uh, resin if you really want to bond it down again. And uh, I think you'll find that's going to be nice and strong when you're done. And look at this, this paper I'm shoving in here for example. As long as these cavities don't need to be clear you can leave the paper in or why not just put more resin all over the top of the paper and then that will become a big solid old block of stuff. Now the resin in the tubes that I'm using is only like a pound for the whole two you know, syringes the way it is, where it comes. Um, so yeah, you can afford to uh, do this, just do it. Why, why, why sacrifice the strength of this whole thing for the sake of uh, 10 p's worth of resin? So just go nuts with it. Go nuts, absolutely. Go nuts with your donuts. Um, I'm going to stick this down as much as possible because I'm going to come back later with more and just plaster it all over the top of this whole bloody thing. That's going to be my contribution to fridge technology. Well, it's not even a fridge. Fridge or a dishwasher. Same thing really, isn't it? Put your dishes in one, put your food in the other and vice versa. Apparently you can cook salmon in a dishwasher. Don't do that though. It's going to taste like chemicals. Right, let's come back when this is cured. So the last piece I want to add, I want to put in here around these buttons, but I don't want to do fuck the buttons. So I've got this big old tub of petroleum jelly. This is my big old resining tub. So all my resining projects revolve around this big tub of petroleum jelly to stop resin getting into the stuff I don't want it to not get into. That makes sense. It does sort of make some sense. So I'm just putting it here over our button. So functionally, it's going to do nothing to our button, but it'll stop any accidental resining from splooping. That's the technical term where we don't want it. One last bit there. Just want to get that little hole as a resining splooping hole. Get that there. Boom. Yeah, I think that's pretty nice. There's just a tiniest amount in this hinge. Hinge. Get in the hinge. I think that's okay there. So again, I'm just going to sort of glue this in place loosely with some resin. You've seen me do it now a million times, but I'll just show you the positioning like that. So it's all around that bit. And that should stop that getting yoinked off. So I'll go and plop that on, and then we'll uh, review in a moment. Mm. 
Oh yeah, that's the real deal there. That's the real deal. Welcome to the real deal. Get it in, get it on. Get your resin going. Get it in, get it on. The resin man's coming to town. Keep on resining. You get to see my head now, you get to see my head. You lucky people get to see the top of my head. Mm. His head is so fine. His head is so fine. Look at that. That's nice. So filth. So filth. Goodness. Resining goodness. Butter. It's going on like butter. I'm telling you, it's butter, boy. Butter bing, butter boom, butter. not going nowhere. Nobody touch nothing. So good. Pull it off the tape. Now some of you might not believe me about the efficacy of using insulation tape with resin, but check this out, right? Ready? Come straight off and you just get a nice smooth finish underneath. So all that remains now for me to do is I'm gonna mix a batch up of the um, fiberglass impregnated resin, the stronger, tougher resins I've got. There's still a quick cure because I just want to pour some in behind here. You see there, there's a nice cavity. I actually put place that one so that it's made a cavity behind. You see there's a gap there, but I've also gone through here and I've kind of taped these up. Well, not taped them. I've actually put resin over the holes because I didn't want it to sort of le leak out of here. But I might put one piece of tape over there temporarily because I want to fill this with the fiberglass um, um, reinforced resin. So this will be a, a really big, tough block there. And I might take out these bits of paper if I can and fill it in here and fill it in here as well. Maybe fill in this cavity as well and try to get a little bit more in this edge. And that's it. And I'm going to pop it on. And that's the best I can do, I think. Best I can do. Shake it, baby.
tough and here goes nothing. Look, it's reacting already. Quick, quick, quick. It's so fine. Oh, it's going, it's going. That's it, boys. He's ready to go. She's so fine, yeah, 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 yeah. She's so fine, fine, fine. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, careful. Only where we want to go. Remember, not on our button. Not on the button. If you can avoid it. And you can. Nice. Nice work. Great success. It works, but it's not great. It's, to be honest, there's still a lot of stress on this part here. If you want to do it, if you're doing it yourself on this Bosch or whatever, put a screw in here. Right, make us put self tapper so this handle doesn't rely on these plastic parts to operate. It'll work off the metal chassis and then it won't do that horrible bendy warping you can see right there. Look, mm. nope, that's no good. Bad design, Bosch. Second bad design feature I've seen from you in a week. Bastards. <laughs>